Welcome back everybody. This will be one more test that I'm trying to prove. In today's test, we're going to try and prove which grass seed works the best. Will it be Scott's or will it be True Greens? Another thing we're going to do today is test to see if this Super Thrive product actually works or not. So Super Thrive is a little bottle that basically is supposed to enhance, almost like a miracle Grow type product, it's supposed to enhance or speed up the process for new seed or seedlings. All right, so stay tuned and see the results. I got my shovel ready. I'm going to dig up this whole section back here, have a couple different tests, and you will see the results soon. This will also be a great video in case you have any questions or want to know how to seed your lawn. All right, so stay tuned. So obviously you guys know that I love doing tests for you guys. I'm ripping up my own grass just to prove this out. So if you guys find this helpful, if this helped you out in any way, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Just want to make sure you guys are loving these videos. Show me that you like them. Can you tell the difference here? Almost ready for seed. Not ready for seed. So your next step is what I already did here, is you go through and rake it up. I did not rake up this side yet. I just want to show you guys for example. And, and also, I hope you guys are noticing this like I am, but I love to see clean edge lines like this. Is this straighter than this? I think so. You can tell this is not the first time I have edged before. Look at that. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. A little overgrown grass, but we're going to pretend we don't see that, right? So the reason why you want to rake this after you already shoveled out the sod is because of the fact that look at how hard this is. This doesn't even go through it. If this doesn't go through it, the grass seed won't be able to get down through it either. Versus this nice just fluffiness. And again, this is just first step. We still have to go through and take off another layer just to make sure that I'm even all the way around with my depth. It doesn't look like I was even, of course, with my shoveling. That's why you could see this little, it's like a trench here, and then it goes up here. So big difference here. So let's rake this all even, and then we'll be ready for the next step, which would be adding new soil. All right. Okay everybody, now that I have my ground already raked up and smoothed out from all the old dirt, next step I'm gonna do is, I've already put my flags in as far as what I'm gonna test. Now I'm gonna mix my new soil. And what I like to use for soil is your generic topsoil, just pretty much whatever cheapest thing you can get. It's a 40 pound bag for roughly, I think it's like a dollar fifty or something like that. Then I like to mix in some manure, love the compost, works great for nutrients, giving it a good start. I use this all over my lawn and miracle Grow. so nice strong soil to get you started right. So this is my mixture. So I usually do 50-50 percentage wise with topsoil and my compost. So I'm also going to mix in some garden soil from miracle Grow also because that's just really good stuff and they have great nutrients. I know this kind of looks weird because I got the sun ending right there, but you can tell it's all nice, nicely smoothed out and I'm going to be doing six different tests for you guys. Try and prove everything there is to know about seed here. And I'll be mixing this all in my wheelbarrow. So I'm going to do 50% at a time. So I'm going to do half the bags at a time. Look at that nice black dirt. Now I'm going to mix in my manure. And of course, this compost and manure smells great, right everybody? We all love this. <laughs> all 
Alright, now I got that. And I'm going to put in half the bag of the Miracle Grow quality soil as well. I'm not going to put in the whole thing because I want that basically half mixture. Alright, that's half the bag. And now let's mix it up. Basically like you're doing uh, your own mulching. That's what I'm doing pretty much here. If you keep lifting it and turning it over, it's the best and easiest way to do it. But if you know of one better and quicker, I'm always up for learning new things. I hope you guys are really going to like this video, and more importantly, I hope it proves everything we want to know about seeds. What's, you know, what's the best way to grow it, how much seed to use, pretty much everything you want to learn. Hopefully this video will explain it. Alright, I'd say it's a pretty good mixture. Time to lay her down. Alright, next step is we rake it and get it as smooth as possible. And again, I didn't use all of the soil because we want to cover it after we put the seed on. Alright? With a very thin coating and then we're going to seed it again on top. Alright? That's the best way to seed. So I want to get just below the level of the existing grass or soil level I should say. Gotta love this tool. This rake, you can use it on the back side for smoothing out and also on the other side for the sharp side for digging. So sod's a little bit different because sod you have a thick layer of soil that's covering all the roots of the grass but here you already know where the seed's going to start so this should match exactly up with your soil you don't want it too high otherwise it's going to go lower you don't want it too low because of the fact that then you're going to be in a depression that's going to where water's going to sink up and actually now that i think about it because of the fact that this is all pitched away from my house i actually want mine a little bit a hair higher than the current soil level. So let me go ahead and do that. It's a good thing I'm talking through this. And because of that, I will be going ahead and do another mixture. Now don't forget, 
I still have to do that extra coating on top, which is going to be roughly a quarter of an inch. All right. You don't want to cover anything, any grass, with more than a quarter of an inch of soil. Reason being is because you want it to be able to get some sunlight. All right. This looks like a good starting place now. I'm basically at the soil level and because I want it a little bit higher because I want it pitched away from my house that is what I'm gonna start with now for the grass seed okay everybody we now have enough product to go through this demonstration or this test to find out which of these will grow the best all right so here are the products that are being used so the first test is we're going to test the true green. This is the sunshade mix. Now I really wanted to use this other bag, but because it's shade only, it wouldn't be a good test. So I had to wait a while to get this bag from True Green. Basically, I was going and hunting True Green trucks. You know, driving around, driving around, looking for True Green trucks, and I found one and got it. Got a bag from him. So just for reference, on the on the shade side, here are the numbers and what's included. Obviously, it's not going to be the exact same mix, but it should be pretty close. So on this bag, it looks like there's close to 50% fescue grass, and then roughly only 30% of bluegrass. So that's the mix that they use, and then the rest is a different mix of others like ryegrass and stuff like that. So just wanted to put that for Exhibit A. So True Green Seed will be all the way in the corner. Then next to it, we will use my favorite, Scott's Kentucky Bluegrass, only Kentucky Bluegrass. Then we will test this ver versus this, Scott's Sun and Shade mix. And again, this is also a mix similar probably to the True Green mix. Here are the information. Here is the information on this bag. Hopefully that's readable to you guys. So if not, basically it looks like it's mostly ryegrass. Looks like ryegrass is close to 20%. Then fescue is, of course, the next highest one at roughly 15, 15 to 18%. It looks like, and then bluegrass is only so you got 5% and three and three, so that looks like 11%. So those are your percentages, and then the other is just mixtures. So next section, we have my watering can, which I've already pre-mixed with the Super Thrive solution. So we're going to see if this product really works, really speeds it up or not. Super Thrive, there it is. So you only mix a quarter teaspoon per gallon. And that's what I did. So then in the last two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the extreme example where this will find out how much seed is actually beneficial. Because do they compete with each other? Do the grass seeds work well together? So we're going to see if it, more seed really makes a difference in how dense the grass grows up. And if it's spotty or not in either or example. So then in the farthest case example, what we're going to do is we're going to do less of a seed. So we're going to do more of a normal, kind of like an overseeding would be so with this test I'm hoping that this proves which grass seed works the best which grows the fastest which takes longer which looks better once it's fully up and is there a difference stay tuned we'll find out these will both be used with Kentucky bluegrass so this should be very similar to test test number two right here First thing I already noticed is that this is very light, meaning very light stuff here. It doesn't have any weight to it, so this would be very tough to go through a spreader. Because of any wind, forget about it. Alright, so that's my first coating with the true green seed.
Next, we're going to go through my favorite, but of course, it's still an unbiased test. We're going to go through the Kentucky Bluegrass seed. Now, we're going to go through the Kentucky Bluegrass seed. Scott's version of non Kentucky bluegrass. the Kentucky Bluegrass normal seed and we're going to use the Super Thrive. Okay, and again, just to clarify, with this Super Thrive formula, what I'm going to do is go through the entire gallon of water mixture. You know, you mix it with a one gallon of water. So I'm going to go through and water this entire gallon, not at once, but I'm going to do it, you know, as much as it needs to. So maybe it be three, four watering so the whole gallon's gone. And then what I'm going to do after that is all gone, so that's one application, we'll say, of Super Thrive. After that will be just normal water, just like everything else. And they'll all get the same water preferential treatment. So now we're going to find out how much seed really matters. So we're going to find out if you use more seed, is that a good thing or a bad thing? So I know I'm guilty of this myself because I always say, hey, you know, more seed really can't hurt. Why can it? We're going to find out here. Here will be the extreme case, and we're just going to layer it on real thick. Definitely more seed here than a spreader would ever show, right? all that money just going out the door. <laughs> seed is not cheap, everybody, but that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video for myself and for you all to find out how much seed is beneficial. So that's an extreme case example. Basically, it's mounded everywhere. And then here, we're going to do a light one, kind of like an overseeding would almost do. So here is the example of the true green seed, which is a mix. Here is the example of the Scots Kentucky Bluegrass seed. Here is an example of the Scots 
sun and shade mix. Here's an example of the Scott Kentucky Bluegrass with Super Thrive. Here is the extreme case of using Kentucky Bluegrass from Scott's and layering it out more than you would ever do. And here is the least case, we'll say, for the thrifty side of us. Let's see if this will come in differently between the two. And one thing I like to do is shovel on some fresh topsoil mixture on top of all this. And again, you don't want to do it too heavy because then the seed won't grow. So just kind of a light, light shaking of it on top. You don't want anything more than like roughly a quarter of an inch. And this is already, again, my pre-made mixture of compost, premium topsoil, and regular cheap old topsoil. So one of the reasons why I like to do this is because it keeps the soil moist and because it hides a lot of the seeds from birds. Birds don't know the difference between their seed, the seed that they eat, versus grass seed. So then you want to break it down so the birds don't hear it. Very light raking. You could even use a plastic one if you wanted to, a plastic rake. And of course, I'm staying within my confines of my pet. <laughs> As a last step, what I like to do is mix up a little bit more on the top of each layer. Just very thin coating, just in case, you know, the ground underneath doesn't take for whatever reason, the soil on top. This way it just puts put more seed out there. And I'll do it pretty thin, especially in the test spots over there. Now, most of this, I assume, that I'm putting on top will be eaten by the birds. And there's nothing really you could do about that. So that's why we're kind of doing two layers. This is the way I recommend doing seed in order to get the best case example. And now I will water the super dry. And now we'll water the rest. Alright, that should be a good enough watering. So now after a month, we should find out which did the best after a month. Again, that's my test frame is a month. Because it takes Kentucky bluegrass roughly a month to fully germinate. So I will give you guys a weekly update from each test here. And we'll see which one's doing better and which one's growing faster, which one's growing slower. Obviously, I can already guess that the Kentucky bluegrass is going to be the slower growth. And it's going to match the rest of my grass, which is most important thing for me and in my opinion just looking at the difference between the seeds from true green see that there's no blue coating on here to help with the water retention and look what this kentucky bluegrass is from scott's 
they got this water smart seed which is supposed to help retain moisture so that will make sure you don't have to water as much save on your watering bills so it's definitely more expensive to buy scots but and it's even more expensive to buy kentucky bluegrass versus the regular you know sun and shade mix a few dollars more for this bag so all things to think about when you're seeding i just wanted to show you this is the full seeding process that i do anywhere i'm seeding in my lawn so the process of seeding that i like to go through as i've shown here is step one break up the ground get like two or three inches down below the soil level and then replace that with good soil you know new soil and ideally like kind of like a topsoil cheapo topsoil mix it with some good miracle grow type of topsoil and then also put in some compost and that'll make it all have the best nutrient base possible for starting for your seed beginning all right very important uh, I mean, it is, if you want to incorporate some of your native soil, that's always a great thing to do too because it's, you know, the rest of the grass is used to that. So, not a bad thing. As long as it's not too hard and compact, you know, you don't want too much clay in there. It's, it's harder to build a good base for the roof in the clay soil. So, next up, obviously, would be to put that seed down. And then, on top of it, I would like to do another thin layer, about a quarter of an inch at most, of that same mixture compost topsoil and the premium topsoil mix those all together you know layer that all on top just to keep those birds away from eating the seeds so you want it nice uniform a lot of times when you see you see a lot of patchiness and could that be due to birds eating a little chunk here chunk here you don't know or could it be due to the fact that someone you know was doing on a windy day or they didn't do an even disbursement of their seed or didn't do enough seed too much seed this video is going to tell you everything you want to know about seed right that's our goal and i hope you guys really like this video then basically your last step would be your top thin layer of seed once again just to guarantee that you're going to have seed to soil contact you already have it on the bottom but just in case maybe you did it too thick that extra top layer or for whatever reason you know this will make it basically dummy proof you got seed on the soil level, then you got soil again, and then you got more seed. I mean, you really can't go wrong with that. I mean, I've had great results doing it this way. You know, you may be doing a little much too seed, but from my experiences, I haven't had any problems with seeding too much. But again, this test over here will prove that if you can have too much. And the last step, which is by far the most important step, is to water. If you're going to seed, and you're not going to water, don't waste your time. It's a complete waste of time if you don't use water when you seed. Constantly, constantly, you got to keep this wet. Otherwise, it'll stop growing. It won't die, but it'll stop growing. I don't know how long that the seed will basically stay dormant and won't grow if it doesn't have water. But don't take that risk. When your seed's not cheap, so when you're seeding, you want to make sure you get good results. Seeding is harder than sod. We all know that, but it can have great ideally even better results because of the fact that it's establishing its own root system in its own this is its own native soil because it hasn't seen any other soil you know versus the sod farms you know they get their roots cut up from beautiful terrain and nutrient base so they already have that established root system in it in their own world and they love it then they get ripped out of their environment and put into a new soil base which has different nutrients and so sometimes it doesn't take not much really you can do about that because you don't know what they're doing side farm i mean that's what they do they got the perfect environment for everything and that's what they do for a living so, so the water schedule i like to use for seed and for sod is pretty close to the same thing so what i'm going to recommend for seeding water schedules is the fact that you water three times a day just just good enough you don't have to water that deep in that first week um, later on we'll start starving it a little bit more so the, so the roots get deeper into the ground so week one of what I like to do is I like to water three times a day you know light three times a day just to make sure it's always moist that's the most important thing week two we're gonna water twice a day then week three we're gonna drop it down to once a day a little bit more water each time so then if we're only watering once a day the roots will start getting thirsty and it'll start going deeper into the ground and that's essentially what we want for the new grass so then in the last week four then we're going to water probably every other day 
alright but uh, most of the roots should already be down we're just basically looking at that point it's mostly top of it alright everybody here's the update after week one so seven days in let's find out which seed is the best so far so no surprise here the true green mix is starting to come up pretty consistently all over the place so hopefully you can tell the grass blades are coming up there the Kentucky bluegrass has yet to be seen no surprise again because it takes longer so for the third section here here is the mix from Scott's the sunshade mix and you can see that this grass is also coming up pretty consistently but surprisingly not as consistent as the true green seed so that's pretty interesting after week one now let's move on to test number four and this is the Kentucky bluegrass Scott seed with super thrive being used and no surprise here I don't see really any grass coming up any new grass blades at least you know every now and then you do see one of these old grass blades coming up you know those, apparently those roots went farther than like uh, three or four inches whatever I dug <laughs> so I don't see any new grass though you can always tell the difference between new grass and old grass then we have the two sections of Kentucky bluegrass with the heavy-handed seed and the light seed so over here I don't see any difference any new grass really coming in over here I really don't see any new grass coming in again again no surprise these are Kentucky bluegrass only so these will take longer than normal so as of right now the mixtures of seeds are actually doing the best and as much as I hate to say it the true green seed is actually doing the best better than the Scots mix of sunshade okay I couldn't wait until week two to post this just because of the fact that I see some interesting results so this is day nine so here's what I'm seeing so true green seed is coming in pretty thick with their mix the Kentucky bluegrass right here is starting to come in surprising that it's coming in this early so you can see a decent amount of it in the sections here is a little missing patch right here for whatever reason but most of it is coming in and then we come to the Scott's mix similar to the true green mix and again the true greens over there and the Scott's mix of sun and shade is right here this is coming in almost as good not quite as good as the true greens mix and then we have the Kentucky bluegrass also coming in this is with the super thrive added uh, you can ignore these random tall ones because I think that's from my apparently like six inches of old roots coming in from the old grass <laughs> so this is coming in pretty good so this is all coming in you can start to see this now the interesting thing is here is my heavy-handed seeding of the Kentucky bluegrass from Scott's so you can see here it's really thick and I got some really thick spots here and there so this is already coming in and this is only nine days and you can already see decent grass blade height so the question is after a month will this all thicken out the rest of it too will this be thicker than the rest or no and here is the light seeding so what I would call a little bit lighter than normal but you can see this is pretty sparse you know it is coming in but but it's nowhere near as thick as when you're doing it heavy-handed like this so I just wanted to give you guys that quick update from a nine-day perspective already so this is coming pretty interesting learning a lot from this video hope you guys are too all right here's the week two update 
of the seed test. So here's our first section, the True Green Mix. And it looks like it's coming in pretty thick. Here's a little overview of the top. And next section we have is the Kentucky Bluegrass from Scott's. This is starting to come in as well. You can tell by the height. It's a little bit slower, of course, but for two weeks in, this looks pretty good for Kentucky Blue to be coming up. So here's the overview of that. So not as thick as the mix, of course. And here is the mix of Scott's Sunshade. So this is coming in pretty thick also and pretty consistent for the most part. Next, we have the Kentucky Bluegrass with the Super Thrive in it. So, from a height perspective, it's still slower than the rest. Kind of interesting. Not seeing much results from the Super Thrive yet. Maybe it's a slow starter though. And the fifth test here is the Kentucky Blue Kentucky Blue, heavy-handed and the light-handed, we'll say. Definitely tell already that seeding heavy versus seeding light does actually make a difference and it doesn't appear to have any issues for competition, meaning competing like some flowers do. You're not supposed to plant flowers too close apart. And I'm not sure where all these little rocks have come from. This, this was all fresh dirt for the top several inches so kind of interesting maybe the rocks are raising up after so much water the dirt's going down and maybe the rocks are coming up not really sure but that's pretty constant throughout so it looks like we're gonna have at least a couple more weeks until the grass blades start to reach the rest of my Kentucky bluegrass existing lawn so but Hopefully, we'll be able to tell. All right, here's the one month update after seeding. So here, first test, again, is the True Green Sunshade Mix. That's coming in pretty solid all the way through. It's a little missing part here, and maybe that's due to the heat from over here. Second test is the Scott's Kentucky Blue, which is what I use everywhere. And next, step three. Step two. And then we have test number two, where the Kentucky Blue is not fully thickened out yet. So we still have some spots here and spots here, but overall, pretty solid. And just so you can tell from a growth perspective after one month the sunshade mix seems to be almost fully grown to my normal grass height and I haven't really done any cutting yet to this looks like I'm gonna have to cut and then we have our test number three here this is the Scott's sunshade mix and this is coming in pretty thick even thicker now than the true green. True green has this issue over here. Doesn't look like Scotch really has any issues. Looks pretty thick overall. And this is very close in height to the rest of my grass. So this looks great. Test number four again is the Scotch Kentucky Bluegrass seed with the Super Thrive, and this, in my opinion, has not seemed to work based upon this test. Doesn't seem like it's growing any quicker. You can see the Kentucky Blue here with the Super Thrive versus the heavy handed seeding from Scott's Kentucky Blue, and even the light handed Kentucky Blue all seem to be a little better than the Super Thrive, so it doesn't appear to be 
helping it grow faster. Maybe it's doing something in the roots, but it's definitely not helping as much with the top growth, we'll call it. But I do want to point out real quick that look at how thick test number five is coming up with this heavy handed seeding. This is coming in so thick. I mean, you can't even see the roots, even if you tried. Can't see any soil. So that's really nice. And that's pretty consistent all the way through. So definitely want this kind of lawn all the way through. And then again, we have our Kentucky bluegrass with the light seeding. And you can see it's just more thin. It's coming in everywhere as it should. However, this is just much lighter in comparison to coverage. And this is just really thick. So this is almost so thick where it's like matted. You can see these little spots right here. It almost looks matted. But no one's been walking around this or doing anything to it yet. This is just letting nature take its course. So one other thing I do want to point out is the fact of the difference in grass color. So there's been no fertilizing done in this whole area here. So shouldn't have any issues due to fertilizer or due to difference in soil because all this was prepped the same way. Now it's possible that the ryegrass in these two and also the fescue grass grew up quicker of course but it's possible that those grass types maybe could be darker green to begin with but one other thing which will be interesting to find out is difference of greenness obviously we all know that the taller grass is the greener it gets so maybe that's the only issue here is that this is just taller and therefore looks greener so we'll find out once uh, I would say this test number five comes up closer in height, then we'll compare better. So we'll give uh, probably one more update in a few weeks and then we'll go from there. Here we are with all of our six tests. And now we will look closer to see what we found. So again, this is the Chemlon or True Green Sunshade Mix. And this is a darker green than the Kentucky Blue. Thought that's pretty interesting. And you can tell this came in pretty solid all the way around. No real open or bare spots. Then we go to the Kentucky Blue, which is the way I normally seed on a normal spacing. And it's a little a little more sparse you'll see a little bit of thinness here and here but overall I mean that'll fill in itself over time because that's how Kentucky bluegrass works then the third test over here again is comparable to the first test you can tell because it's got the same color it's the sunshade mix but this is the Scots version because I'm not sure you can ever buy the true greens version so you can tell this is all come in very solid pretty thick also so no bare spots or any open spots there then we have the Kentucky bluegrass for the last three seeding tests so in this fourth test I tested a product called super thrive and I don't see any difference it's not any thicker and it did not grow any faster than the rest so you could tell right now, I actually have been normal mowing because it's been, you know, almost two months. So you could tell the grass height for all my tests is the same level as my normal grass. So, and even the Super Thrive, I do have some, a little bare spot here and it didn't grow as well against the pavement, maybe. You can argue that's just because that's the hottest place. It seemed like a lot of the Kentucky Blue struggled a little bit because of the heat. But then we move on to the fifth test. Now this is Kentucky Blue putting it down very heavy handed. So this will answer your question, does how much seed you put down actually matter? And can it ever be a bad thing to put down too much seed? 
will it compete with each other? And the answer is no. That has been proven extensively here, I hope. So here in the last two tests, test five and six, you can tell the difference between heavy handing it and light handing it. When you use sparse seeds, or not too much seed, then what you risk is this. You're left with these little open spots, which are not bare by any means, but it's definitely less thick. When we look at the heavy handed version, the seeds do not fight with each other as far as competition. I mean, this is extremely thick. I'm not sure what the best way is to show thickness, but putting my hand down, you can tell how much grass there actually is and how much is matted down. I mean, this is solid in every way. I'm gonna try and show you guys the root system, but honestly, I can't even get down in it. I mean, this is all thick everywhere you look, extremely thick. Now this video gives me a little idea of, is it possible to have your grass too thick? Because I mean, in this case, I can't even get down to the root system. Of course, water can and other nutrients, but that's extremely thick. Here, you could see the root system right through it, or should I say the soil. So there are some heavy spots where it's very thick, like over here. And over here now maybe that's just the way the wind blew or when it rained or maybe it wasn't perfect seeded but in general you can tell there's no open spots over here and there is some light open spots over here so I hope you guys love this video I learned a lot through this video and I hope you guys did as well if you did make sure you thumbs up this video and subscribe for more of these test videos and lots of other videos about lawn care and how to make your neighbors jealous. So I think you guys can agree with me that we've tested a lot of theories in this video. One of the theories we tested is how much seed is the right seed amount to put down because let's face it, seed's expensive and we don't want to be just throwing it down and it doesn't actually benefit or or even worse yet, that the grass seed is actually competing with each other and hurting your lawn or your seeding chances, you know. Because when you put down flowers, you can't put those down too close, supposedly, because of the fact that they compete with each other, their root system. So you're supposed to plant them. That's why they have a set six inches, nine inches, 12 inches apart from each other, because they compete. Grass seed, we found out, does not have that issue. Grass works great with each other needs no room apparently. So one of the things that we did test is how long it takes for the grass to grow and germinate. Does sun and shade mix different types of grass like perennial rye and fescue grass? That grows quicker. We've proven that how much quicker. We've shown that in the earlier steps and weeks. Weeks one, two, three, four, several weeks of this video. All right. So, and we've also tested how long it takes for these grass types, many different grass types, to grow to the full normal height, meaning the three and a half inches that I'm mowing. All right. Next thing we tested is a product called Super Drive, which is supposed to be great for lawns and gardens. It's supposed to make the grass grow quicker. So we've proven that here also. But maybe I did something wrong with Super Drive. If you guys think I did something wrong and you want to see another video regarding just Super Drive by itself, with a couple different tests, let me know in the comments below if you've also had, or also even better yet, if you've had success on it where you've done some kind of testing, let me know also, and then I'll do another test on that. And next thing that we learned during this, which was kind of a surprise to me, was the fact that the sun and shade mixes actually came up darker green than the Kentucky bluegrass. So I'm not sure exactly why this is, but if you want a darker green, I guess you can go with the sunshade mix. So the fescue grass or the rye grass that's grown up first is actually quicker and greener. So if that's your goal, make sure you're putting down that sunshade mix. So one of the reasons the Kentucky bluegrass might be so light in color is because of the fact that maybe it's just really needing some nitrogen, you know, needs that fertilizer, and maybe that will make it as dark or even darker than the sunshade mix. 
So that's going to be a separate test on its own. I don't want to get too many tests. I already have six tests going here, so it's definitely enough tests for now. All right, here's the last quick update for the grass seed test. And you can see that it is all green now. This is the beginning of November, and it's all matching, thank goodness, because the spring and the summer was pretty ugly. I mean, the grass came up fine, but it was multiple different colors because I was using multiple different grass seeds. But now you can see that it's all very similar from a looks perspective. And as you can see, and here is your difference in grass. This is your mixes here. Thicker blades of grass. Then when you come over here, you'll see your thin blades of grass, which is your Kentucky bluegrass. And this is the dense section here. And this is the sparsely seeded, we'll say. So, worked out pretty well. Very happy with the results. Other than this little line right there. Because of the fact that this is where I was mowing a little differently, so I did one strip going across only as needed. So I'm going to have to raise up the ground a little bit. Didn't plan on uh, the mower going over this hump right here. Apparently my ground before was pitched up a little bit just to go over this with the lawnmower. When I have an obstruction this tall, it kind of worries me about hitting it with the lawnmower blade. So. I want to make sure I do not do that, so I'm probably going to raise up the ground a little bit to give it the pitch it used to have. I believe the ground should be a little bit higher, almost to the point of this. Then once I do that, my backyard here will be complete again. So thank you everybody for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this test. I love doing these tests for you guys. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, but hopefully you have, you checked out my last videos on testing whether or not it's better to mulch in the fall and if it actually works as far as greening up your grass in the springtime. Alright, make sure you subscribe and like this video for more. Alright, thanks.